Hi there everybody, this is Miss Nelson here and today we're doing lesson 6.8 in our 4th grade Floor to Go Math books. Lesson 6.8 is about comparing and ordering fractions. So in lesson 6.6 .6 and lesson 6.7, we practice comparing fractions, saying which one was larger and um, or greater and which one was less or smaller. So we're going to do the same thing today. We're just going to, once we figure out, we're going to have more than two fractions. So we're going to have three or more fractions. And once we figure out which one's the greatest and which one's the least, we're going to put them in order. So we're going to put these fractions in order from either least to greatest. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I do not really like the way that they do this lesson in the book. So I'm going to fill out the organizer so you can have it for a reference. But then I'm also going to explain it to you the way that I do it just that's a little bit easier. Um, if you're in my class, you should be filling out page 257 and 258 in your big math books. So we're going to just go ahead and get into this. It says Jody has equal size bins for the recycling center. She filled three fifths of a bin with plastics, one twelfth of a bin with paper, and nine tenths of a bin with glass. Which bin is the most full? So we want to know out of three fifths, one twelfth, and nine tenths, which one is the greatest or the most full? So the first way that they say to do this is to locate and label three fifths, one twelfth, and nine tenths on a number line. And so whichever one ends up being here, that would be your greatest. So that would be our final answer. And then to compare them, we just put them in order so you'd fill in the other two spots with the other two fractions and we'd put them in order so the way that they would do that is they'd find out where these three fractions belong on the number line so i'm just going to go ahead and tell you that the one twelfth is here and the three fifths is here and the nine tenths is here so we can see that 9 tenths is going to be the greatest one. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this stuff in. You can fill it in with me. 3 fifths is greater than 1 twelfth, or um, 1 half, I'm sorry, 1 half. And 1 twelfth is less than 1 half. And 9 tenths is greater than 1 half. Here's my 1 half. So we're comparing everything to 1 half. To start off with so we can see that the three fifths and the nine tenths are both greater than one half and the one twelfth is less than the one half so then they would narrow it down even more because they wouldn't have their answer at this point they would be deciding between three fifths and nine tenths on which one is greater so they would compare the three fifths and the nine tenths so they would say three fifths is equal to how many tenths well what do I do to my 5 to get it into a 10 I multiply it by 2 so that means I'm also going to have to mu multiply my numerator by 2 which would give me 6 tenths so now that I have 3 fifths written as tenths I can take that 6 tenths and compare it to my original 9 tenths and I can see that the 9 tenths is actually the greatest one. So the 9 tenths is greater than the 3 fifths. So that's how they have you figure it out. Now I'm going Now I'm going to just go ahead and show you how I would do it. So if I had the three fractions, three fifths and um, one twelfth and nine tenths, and they wanted me to compare and order them, I would go ahead and make all of them have common denominators first so that I could compare them. So the way that I make them have common denominators is I find my I circle my denominators first. So I have 5, 12, and 10 that I'm working with. And then I write out the multiples of those numbers until I find one that's in common. So I'm just going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 40, 
45, 50, 55, 60. Okay, that's far enough. Then I'm going to count by 12s. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. Ooh, I see one that's in common. I said 60 up here for when I was counting by fives. I just said 60 when I'm counting by twelves. And I think I can say 60 when I'm counting by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Yes, I did. So the denominator that they're going to have in common is going to be 60. So since 60 is the denominator that they're going to have in common, I'm going to need to change all of my fractions into 60ths. So 3 fifths into 60ths, 1 twelfth into 60ths, and 9 tenths into 60ths. And then I can compare them because they'll all be the same. So how many times did I count by 5 to get 60? I counted 12 times, which means I need to also do my numerator times 12. 3 times 12 would be 36. So I'll have 36 sixtieths. 3 fifths is equal to 36 sixtieths. Then I need to change my 1 half into sixtieths. What do I count by... Oops, I'm sorry, my 1 twelfths into 60ths. I count them by 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times to get 60. So since I did the bottom times 5, I need to also do the top times 5. 1 times 5 is 5. So I can say 1 twelfth is equal to 5 60ths. And then the last one is I need to change my 9 tenths into 60ths. I counted by tens 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times to get to 60. So since I did the tens 6 times, I also do, do the top 6 times. So 9 times 6 is 54. So I can say 9 tenths is equal to 54 60ths. And now that they're in 60ths, I can easily put these in order. I can say that my biggest one is the one that has 54 on the top. So that means 9 tenths is my greatest. And then my next greatest out of 36 and 5 would be the 36. So that's the one that was equivalent to 3 fifths. So next I'd write 3 fifths which means my smallest one, my last one, would be the 5 sixtieths, which was the one that was equivalent to 1 twelfth. So now I've compared all my three fractions and I've put them in order from greatest to least. So this is my final answer for greatest to least. 9 tenths, 3 fifths, and 1 twelfth. So if you're in my class, write down the password bunny, and actually we just filled out the top part of 257, so that's all you need to do in your big math book today. And if you have any questions, leave me a message. Thanks.